we'll talk on that. Okay, so um, in a Hawkins group, and that's generally the thing that many people will get so many different widely, widely differing uh, calibrations. Now it's a, so when Hawkins did power versus force, he did a PhD and, uh, and he also did, uh, when he wrote power versus force, he got like rooms full of, and it was videotaped as well, of about a hundred people to calibrate certain statements and they all got the same answer. You know, like God is love. Is God love? You know, and everyone, you know, everyone stayed strong. God is love, you know. Uh, yeah, so, uh, or if, uh, and there was various statements of absolute truth and everyone in, and that was videoed and then that was put into, this, oh, uh, someone video, I'll put this. These are just my <coughs> interpretations and views. Uh, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people can come up with different ideas. This is my, my interpretations and personal views on it. But anyway, that's what I understand anyway. And, and so, and then everyone Hawkins sort of uh, talked it to, all got answers in correlation with his results on the map of consciousness. This is my intuition interpretation view, which I can be wrong, I admit, I might be wrong. Uh, later on, uh, in his later videos, um, he talked less about how easy it was to do uh, muscle testing. Uh, whereas in the earlier books, videos, it seems like, well, you know, it's very, very easy for everyone to cor correlate the exact same answers. When you're doing, when you're doing the map of consciousness, I mean, there's, there's lots of things to get the map. You, you, you know, on a map of consciousness where Jesus is at a thousand, where Adolf is at 70. Otherwise, if you just say map of consciousness, uh, you know, you don't know what kind of map you're getting. You know, it has to be re in reference to the referencing that he has used. Also, um, later on, it you know, uh, you know, there's a thymic thumb. If you're not, if you've got a vested interest in something, you can't hold a position of neutrality around something. Then um, you're not going to have. You're not going to be a pure. Uh, you're not going to be, uh, what is it that you're tuning in? You're, you're tuning into the, um, you're tuning into the infinite consciousness of God, which is everywhere, in all places, at all times, in every moment. I don't know if that makes sense. But there is information of everything here right now. Um, you know, and even like, you know, uh, you know, what did Adolf have tomatoes for breakfast on, you know, in 1942? Yeah, you know, it had tomatoes. It can sort of do that. That sounds pretty miraculous, but uh, of course, then you know the accuracy is going to depend on the level of consciousness of the person doing the calibrations. To the extent a person has got ego uh, that is influencing things and is not a pure conduit of the collective, then you know, like if I was going to say, like I don't know, something. Like, uh, I've got my favourite politicians, not your favourite politician. And I go, I won't say any names, because that can probably bring up debate. But this <laughs> politician is, is integrous and I collapse. You know, this one's no, obviously. That isn't like a personal thing. You should, be, you should be neutral, blank, have no vested interest. And when you're, of course, an enlightened teacher, you don't. Every, you're in a position, you're witnessing, you're in a position of neutrality. And you've transcended every single ego a potential interference, if that makes sense, of the ego coming in there and wanting it to go a certain way or having a preconceived idea. So it's like the body then, what is it that it's responding to? Well, you're asking the infinite how much of absolute truth is in there. I don't know if this makes sense. There's this, there's, here's the thing with the relativists think that, you know, well, I can make up anything I want and there is no absolute level of truth in the universe. You know, I could say, for example, I could say Adolf is, is really good and Jesus is really bad. You know, I mean, that's my view and you're just making it up that Jesus was love and Adolf wasn't. But that's just an arbitrary opinion. That there is absolute truth. God is at the absolute. There is an absolute love. Uh, there is an absolute truth. There's an absolute light. There's an absolute power. Then everything can be um, calibrated. Thank you. Everything can be calibrated on that scale relative to the absolute. So like, 
you know, like, um, so uh, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, um, uh, Adolf Hitler, the dinosaurs, spiders, fish, squirrels, you know, all of them have a level of the, the quality of the absolute, I don't know if that makes sense, within them, absolute love, absolute truth, even writing has a level of truth to it. It's not like an arbitrary, like my opinion is that, um, I don't know, my opinion is that, uh, I don't know, what is it like, um, let me think, you know, like I, I, I think uh, Sama bin Laden is better than the Bible, you know, and that's just my arbitrary opinion and you're wrong if you think the Bible is higher than, no, there, there is a level, you can check through the absolute there is a level of absolute truth, and some, some teachings are at a higher level than other teachings. And each li <coughs> line by line, you can calibrate each line in the book. So I remember Hawkins, um, I'm rabbiting on, aren't I? I can rub it on sometimes, but um, it was very, very interesting. Like, there's the Aramaic version of the Bible, and then there is the Saint, I think, the, uh, hopefully I'm getting it right because I'm coming, uh, Saint James's version. In the Aramaic version, like, there's no reference to Jesus on the cross saying, God, why have you abandoned me? And in the King James, it is, yeah, you know. And you go, you can check with your muscle, you know, uh, from a, you know, and it will go, oh, the King James, my body goes weak. But the Aramaic version, when there's no mention that Jesus is saying, oh, God, you've abandoned me, now I'm on the cross, and you're gone, you've left, forsaken me, that one isn't there, and you, you can get a check. Now, now of course, some people... You'll get, you know, if you just pick a room full of people who are got various levels of ego in them, well, you might get 50 of them saying that's true and 50 of them saying it's wrong. And you go, well, therefore, kinesiology is not accurate, you know, because everyone should get, you know, that version and none of them. But no, I mean, um, some people have released more of the ego and are more pure channels and will get very accurate, and some people will get very haphazard. Also, the other thing is people in the middle will have good days when they're tuned in and they'll have bad days when they're tuned out. That's why you've got to like, first you've got to like find a thump if you're an average person and then, you know, you still might have a massive ego of stuff to clear. So your accuracy is going to be quite wonky. If you're like at a very, very advanced level, you haven't got anything and you're just witnessing, then the accuracy is going to be very accurate. Now, I think, you know, this is the thing that, um, my view, uh, and I absolutely agree, you know, if you ask a series of Hawkins students, 10 of them, to calibrate something, you get 10 different answers. But Hawkins students are not all, you know, are not, you know, they're, they're a wide variety of people, you know. Yep. There's something I'm going to add to this. Yep. Um, that there's a film about the life of Neil Donald Walsh, mm. it says there's in a movie version of Conversations with God, and he speaks about how he received the... Yeah. the text of Conversations God. And in the beginning of that, Neil Donald Walsh, or the actor playing him, is giving a presentation and somebody's like, how, how comes you're charging so much and you had an affair and you did this and you lost all your integrity? And Neil Donald, Walsh, Neil Donald Walsh's answer, bearing in mind this is a scripted movie, mm -hmm. was, isn't it amazing how God chooses such flawed messengers? Mm -hmm. And so the... What, and I mean, as you go through history, I mean, Martin Luther King Jr. had numerous affairs. There's all kinds of low integrity behaviour from people who did very good things. And as such, when people get these widely up and down calibrations of different people, yeah. does that necessarily reflect on the pieces of work that they produce? Like... Can somebody who is on a medium to low level of calibration, as in, say, the low 200s to 300s, then produce a piece of work that's in the four, five, six hundreds because of where they're in, in that particular this, the, this zone they get into when they're actually writing? Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's quite... Uh, yeah, that's a very advanced question. Look, um, you, now, the level of... Co level, why are levels of consciousness... <coughs> Why, why are levels of consciousness um, different? You know, like, if I'm calibrating at 400, yeah, what it means is I have a lot of belief systems, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of things that can interfere with my connection right now. 
you know, let's say I'm in an, in, a, in, a, in an ashram where everyone's chanting peace and love uh, and my ego's not activated at all uh, and I suddenly say, like, you know, I, I can start speaking. Uh, my, you know, you could say that the calibration of everything I'm saying can be quite, quite good at that point. However, if you suddenly say, like, uh, you know, but do you also love this politician? And that's a, one, of the th one of the things I've got baggage around. Uh, suddenly my calibration, what seems to be, the cal if you calibrate the level of words as soon as you mention that politician, you go, well, it's just dropped 300 points, yeah. you know, on the thing. Even though that's my general calibration, when those things interfere in fact, so, yeah, you know, like if you're just to calibrate my level of words here in a spiritual group, you want to calibrate my level of words after I've had a fight with someone, mm -hmm. you know, they would be different. I mean, I have a general calibration, which is just my average calibration, if you like. But that can be also, the thing is, even advanced, even spiritual teachers can be um, at very advanced spiritual levels, and yet at times, you know, bits of them who are, you know, they can also be, uh, something can come up for them, which, and then can lead to, in that, like if you're, I mean, I have to say in a general way, like if you're like very highly calibrated, there's very little baggage, but there still is some baggage. It doesn't mean that there's no baggage in every single area and there's nothing that could trigger that person that they're purely clear. So let's say most of the time I'm speaking like love and I'm religious love, but then suddenly we have a political debate and then suddenly I'll say like, well, that person's bad and they shouldn't have done that. And if you were to calibrate my words and also my behaviours uh, and uh, around that side, it would be suddenly you'd see be a huge drop on that. But generally speaking, if I was to write a book on love with no mention of po politics in it, it might be calibrating very high. But in a certain context, um, um, you know, you, you could be triggering something. There's areas, if you like, pockets within the ego which are very low which haven't been transcended. In those areas, then, it's like, if that, let, let's say I'm in, I'm in a, a room full of lovely people and none of my stuff has been triggered, and you could say that generally everything I'm saying is at a very high vibration. But suddenly I go into a, a political debate and then, you know, it's like now the little stuff that I have got left is really, suddenly comes to the fore. So now I'm not pure is that stuff is what's talking now. So it's like, oh, well, that politician is bad, that's wrong, they shouldn't have done that. Those people are wrong for liking that politician. And then, you know, and if you say, like, well, let's write down everything Sabir says and put it in a book, and you calibrate that book, you know, that, you know, that book would be very lowly calibrated. Um, so um, it's, it's more advanced than that with enlightened teachers as well. Um, so that's. Uh, I hope you're not going to ask that. Ask that question. But uh, uh, um, but uh, uh, that, that there there is something on when one is in the observer or one has transcended. There is still, if you like, it's called prusha. There's a, a remnant that interfaces with um, with the world, which has some of the stuff uh, of the of what existed before, even though that which is which is, if you like, here is non-dual. There is, you know, it's like that non-dual space uses that which was there before, and there are some flavors of that would still go on. Um, in terms of, um, yeah. I was gonna mention something that I actually mentioned, I think one of the first times I came to this group. Yeah. There's a story in the Bible of Jesus getting the ump with the people trading yeah. in the church. And he went and he threw over the table, whip, whip, threw a whip around and told yeah. everybody to clear off, not, my words, not his, yeah. and you have turned this place into a den of thieves. Now, there is a part of me that thinks when somebody is, I, I believe that there's, no, I don't believe there's anything wrong with assertiveness, I don't believe there's anything necessarily wrong with anger, but when somebody is on a high vibration, let's say, 
their reactions don't tend to be like that in my experience. So is that just a story that can be used to demonstrate that Jesus was a human being? And while his calibration according to the level of consciousness was exceptionally high, he was still a human being. Well, you know, I mean, here's the thing of... Um those were the things I was hoping you weren't going to bring up. <laughs> well, that's this too. By creative, I, I created that to responsibility because <laughs> uh, I didn't want that question asked, so I made him ask it. <laughs> I mean, there's two great examples. One is Jesus in the temple. The other one that a lot of spiritual seekers from the East talk about. Um, now, what is the name? Yeah, Nisargatan is cigarette smoking, uh, and. Uh, so they, you know, he, he's an enlightened teacher, but he's puffing away cigarettes like a chimney. You know? <laughs> and uh, so he's like, like, you know, how can you be an enlightened teacher while you're puffing away the cigarettes? <laughs> or like, what about Jesus and you know, in the temple? But here's the thing: like, if you practice the, um, if you practice the observer, being the witnesser of your thoughts, eventually you get to these non-dual states, which become what you are. But there seems to be that which is like what's remnant of what used to be that seems to be interfacing yeah. with the world. But you're in no way is that what you are. Yeah. Um, so it's like there's a strong observing, there's a strong non-dual space. And yet there seems to be something like a puppet that seems to be speaking and talking and doing all kinds of things and seems to have almost like human qualities uh, to it. And then, uh, and then if you calibrate the consciousness of that thing, it's like 1,000. But then if people like watch what it's doing, well, it seems to be throwing tables around a bit and it seems to be puffing cigarettes. And so, oh, well, <coughs> that thing is angry at, the, at these people. And that thing that is smoking is enjoying its cigarettes. It's addicted to cigarettes and is getting some kind of high and can't stop the cigarettes. But that's not the calibration but I can understand people then yeah, discrediting no, I, I, I understand that. people describe well he smokes cigarettes therefore he's not the real deal and he told those temple people so he's very personal and human and he's getting angry uh, in identified personal way at these people but when you get tastes of the mystical spiritual things you realize there was no person there yeah. who was getting angry and there, were, there was no person deciding to take a cigarette and, uh, and then, you know, get a, you know, and be addicted to that thing. So, whereas that is, n that is, um, that is a perception or a judgment, but is not, is not really experiencing the level of consciousness of that individual. So, but it does seem that way, like they are actually personally cigarette smoking and personally knocking around to, and, oh yes, Jesus was, took it personally and he got angry at that man and he sort of told him not to do that any longer. Yes, in my, my um, it wasn't to say that Jesus wasn't spiritual because he got the ump sometimes. And it's the same as a lot of things, the guy smoking, I don't know this man. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people I've experienced and met over the years who've got that light on in their eyes and you can really feel that presence and they do all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it's and it's almost like God's keeping them under the radar, you know. It's yes. like, okay, well, you're gonna you're gonna have your enlightenment because I believe as well that when you receive, um, I'm not, I don't really like using the word enlightenment. It, 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 there's baggage that goes with it, the same as words like yeah. awakening. But when you receive that grace, yes, you receive it unconditionally. Mm. So that's in spite of all the little bad habits and behaviour you may have done and all the little things and the ability you've got to carry on upsetting people and blah, blah, blah. You receive it and then how you then interface that gift with your behaviour is more of an ongoing journey that happens beyond that. that that's the, but then I, what I question though with that is how useful is it really to do things like calibrations, because if because I think in, in if you if not if we're not careful, 
it could be like, well, I'm not going to listen to him anymore because he only calibrates at 300. I might be going for the 700 pluses. You know, they're, they're the one, they're the useful one. Everybody else is just an egomaniac. You know, I don't care if they've got integrity or not. Look at look at his behaviour. You know, it's it can be used in a very um, oh, I totally agree. And then, I mean, unbecomingly way. <laughs> no, I totally, totally agree. And in fact, that I mean, Hawkins has had a lot of you know people saying, well, you can't. Uh, you know, there was things on the calibration of dolphins versus whales or something like that, where people were in an uproar, uh, that he made a personal opinion. Um, but, you know, my, my own thing is that uh, some people are very good at calibrating. There are pure channels for calibration. And, and it's like consciousness draws you to their, to their teachings and their things. And, and they are, that, that is for you. Uh, and yes, a lot of people will perceive that and have a lot of stuff around it. But it's like if you can get uh, calibrations at a level of absolute truth, and you know it's of a level, you say, I think you said it really, really well, sometimes you can feel the energy. You know, if you just write down the words, but you know they're the real deal. You, you know it on a spiritual level. It's not that... Uh, yeah, the, the, the real deal. So, and you're able to take it from, you know, like your head goes silent, you go into state of bliss, all the buses arrive on time every time you see them, but, you know, you win the lottery, and you know they're the real deal, but then you get someone on the street say, but yeah, three years ago, they yeah. said, uh, they said that, uh, I've got a quote from that person, and they said that, uh, you know, whatever, you know, they had a political opinion. So therefore, that's not a real person. Don't ignore everything they've said. But spiritually, you've had the experience. You know, you know the, the real deal. And that's what I had with Hawkins. So I'll have lots of people say, I won't go into conversation. Like, well, he said, Wales calibrate up that. Well, therefore, everything he said is absolutely you know, a load of things. Because, no one, you know, because dolphins should calibrate less than whales, and not whales should calibrate more than dolphins. But it's just, it's just an arm thing yeah. from the calibration. So... Can I yeah. leave it there? No, I, I think I think that's um, yeah, I think that's good enough for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's a big.